This is an extremely valuable question for you, Asimili. Every fucking student who sees this question thinks it's an erratum at first, okay? I actually jacked this question, the entire thing, word for word, off of my high-yield genetics PDF. So if any of you have seen that PDF from the free stuff tab on my website, this question is in the PDF. I recommend going through the genetics PDF. You will literally go from an F to an A in genetics by going through 50 questions I put in the PDF, okay? Why did I jack this question from my own PDF? Because of its yieldness, I don't think it deserves going under the radar. It's that good, okay? Now, before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Help grow this channel. Share with one of your friends who's prepping for US Simile. Hit the like button. Hit the bell if you want notifications. And find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, and the link is down below. Now, let's start the fucking question. Okay, so 10-year-old boy, one week history of fatigue, he recently recovered from a cold, he has scleral icterus, his hemoglobin is low at 10.4 grams per deciliter, the normal range in males and non-menstruating women is 13 to 17.5 grams per deciliter, in menstruating women it's 12 to 17.5, hematocrit is low at 31.2%, this figure, this percentage will be three times greater than the hemoglobin is in grams per deciliter. Okay, that's how these two numbers relate in most US simile questions. It's not mandatory that it's the case, but that's often how it is, in case you're wondering. MCV is normal at 92, the range is 80 to 100. And then we have this obscure thing called direct antiglobulin test, which is positive. This is a Coombs test. A Coombs test, simply put, means that you have antibodies against your RBCs. That's what it means, okay? A direct Coombs test versus an indirect Coombs test, Direct just means you take the patient's RBCs, you bring them into a laboratory, okay? Versus an indirect Coombs test, you take the patient's plasma, you bring it into a laboratory, and in both instances, you're testing for the presence of antibodies. So we have a positive Coombs test, means we have antibodies against RBCs. Our next line tells us we have spherocytes. We have this image, which, we, which is sort of irrelevant for this question. We don't need the image, it just makes it pretty. But we we explicate that we have spherocytes here, okay? And we have a bunch of answer choices. Now, this is where things get interesting, is this is not hereditary spherocytosis, okay? This is why students think this is an erratum. You can get spherocytes in drug and infection-induced autoimmune hemolytic anemia. And the way we differentiate from hereditary spherocytosis is that in spherocytosis, it's a cytoskeletal defect, autosomal dominant, okay? And ankrin, spectrin, band proteins, there's nothing to do with antibodies in hereditary serocytosis, okay? The autosomal dominant condition, it has nothing to do with antibodies against RBCs. So we know that this is not hereditary serocytosis, all right? Now, this is drug or infection-induced hemolysis. The kid recently recovered from a cold. He has a positive Coombs test. He has spherocytes. Okay, spherocytes are not limited to hereditary spherocytosis. So we look at the answer choices here. Most students are going to choose choice A, heterozygosity in the spectrum gene. Wrong fucking answer. This is hereditary spherocytosis, autosomal dominant. Okay, could have been anchorin on the actual NBME. They write anchorin. I just changed it to, I made it spectrin. Okay, cytoskeletal issue. Autosomal dominant, heterozygosity. You only need one mutation for the condition. Homozygosity would imply we have an autosomal recessive condition. Okay, so on the <clears throat> on the NBME exam, they do not have this answer choice. No specific mutation. This is the correct answer in this case because it's autoimmune hemolytic anemia causing spherocytes as our, as per our positive Coombs test. Our answer here is no specific mutation on the NBME exam. They don't have this answer choice. They force you to choose a heterozygosity versus homozygosity answer, and they don't mention a positive Coombs test. And the answer is just choice A, heterozygosity and spectrum gene, or anchorin gene, as I said. Okay, so uh, this is a really, really important point for me to emphasize. Okay, you can get spherocytes in drug and infection-induced hemolysis. Okay, they're not limited to hereditary spherocytosis. Students think this is an erratum at first, okay? Now, final point, you can diagnose hereditary serocytosis with osmotic fragility test and eosin-5 malamide test. 
Sometimes questions can tell you the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, MCHC, is elevated in the presence of spherocytes. Questions that are more vague, more difficult to diagnose, and you're not sure whether it's hereditary spherocytosis or not, they can tell you MCHC is elevated. And also in G6PD deficiency, X-linked recessive, you will not see spherocytes. You're going to see bite cells, also known as degmocytes, and Heinz bodies, okay? We can make this a long discussion. We can make this a 19-minute clip. Okay, but your short take home is just spherocytes you can get in drug and infection induced hemolysis, and you will have a positive Coombs test. Okay, and there's no specific mutation involved. I'm going to continue making more content. You know the deal. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time.